Here we go, Chucky Schumer talking about the minimum wage. Oh, good. New Chuck Schumer eyes a second shot at raising the minimum wage through reconciliation, this time in the infrastructure package. So when you read the article from Ryan Grin at The Intercept, um, he says, well, Chuck Schumer is arguing, well, now if we bring it back up to the parliamentarian, maybe the parliamentarian will say, oh, it's okay, it can go in the infrastructure package because the infrastructure package is more closely aligned with stuff involving wages. Oh, good. So in other words, uh, Chuck Schumer is actually not eyeing a second shot at raising the minimum wage through reconciliation. Chuck Schumer is hoping that the parliamentarian is going to change their mind because the nature of the bill is different from the COVID stimulus bill. Why would you think that that's the case? So anyway, listen, here's the point. What's happening here? I think Chuck Schumer is just trying to do the hollow PR move of like, oh, I swear I'm still fighting to increase the minimum wage. Oh, good. I think that's what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to be like, everybody give me credit as if I'm fighting to raise the minimum wage, even though I'm not even close to fighting for raising the minimum wage. They say in the article he's going to leave it up to the parliamentarian again. So listen, just to put that in perspective and context, there's been a number of times where Republicans have heard from the parliamentarian, oh, you can't do X, Y, or Z through reconciliation. You know what Republicans have done? Fire the parliamentarian and bring in one who says, yeah, you can do that through reconciliation. They just look for the answer that they want. And then they get it. And then they pass it. Welfare reform was passed through budget reconciliation. The $1.7 trillion tax cut law was passed through reconciliation. Actually, I don't know if it's a $1.7 trillion tax cut law. I think that's the amount that was added to the deficit from Trump's tax, cut, tax cuts for the rich and corporations. They just say, oh, you think we can't do this? Okay, you're fired. We're going to bring in somebody who says you can do this. That's what you do if you actually really care and want to pass the thing in question. That's what you do. But I don't think Schumer cares, and I don't think he really wants to pass the thing in question. He just wants the credit as if he's fighting for it, and then when it's inevitably slapped down, he wants to say, oh, blame them, oh, good. Blame the staffer who we hired, who has zero power. Parliamentarian sounds all official and sounds real and like they have power. They don't have power. They have no power at all. Kamala Harris could have overridden the parliamentarian anyway, or they could have fired one and brought in a new one. So I really think what's happening here is that Schumer's sort of playing the media a little bit. And because he's doing this on other issues, too. He's doing this on student loan debt relief. He just released a video with Elizabeth Warren and, and I think Menendez. And they were talking about, oh, get in contact with Joe Biden. Call Joe Biden. Write Joe Biden and tell him to eliminate student loan debt. Oh, good. And he says, I even asked Joe Biden. And Joe Biden says, OK, have people reach out to me. It's OK. So you're not you're not actually fighting. If that's the case, if Joe Biden says, yeah, go ahead, send me the letters, and you go out there and say, send him the letters, you're, you have power, Chuck. So what really needs to happen is you need to try to eliminate student loan debt, maybe do something about it, get Manchin and Cinema on board, you know, whip your caucus. Again, do your job, actually fight for it, use carrots and sticks, play politics, um, or do whatever the hell you can to actually convince Joe Biden that he needs to do it through executive order, because he can do it through executive order. But you're not actually doing that. Again, I think it's the virtue signal. I think it's like, hey, give us credit like, as if we're fighting to raise the minimum wage. Give us credit as if we're fighting to uh, eliminate student loan debt. But we're not going to do it. And when we don't do it, I still want the credit as if I tried and I want you to blame others other than me. But I really think it's deeply disingenuous and deeply dishonest because I don't think he really wants it. I don't think he really wants it. Because the idea like, oh, he's eyeing a second shot at raising the minimum wage to reconciliation. They could just do it. He would have to, again, get the eight Democrats who strayed to fall in line with a carrot or stick approach. And he can do that. He can whip the votes. He can effectively force them. He would have to do that. But instead of the article saying that's what he plans on doing, the article says he's going to ask the parliamentarian again for permission and he thinks the parliamentarian will change their mind. When 
in the article, they say it's very possible that the parliamentarian literally just copy and pastes the same thing they said the last time that she said no to reconciliation for the minimum wage. She just copy and paste that and put it for this bill as well. So this is the problem that we deal with with Democrats all the time is that they really are in many instances a wolf in sheep's clothing where the Republicans will tell you up front, I don't agree with you and go fuck yourself and I'm never going to be for raising the minimum wage. And that's the end of the conversation. A lot of the Democrats will pretend like they are in favor of it and then their actions will not back that up at all because they're not in favor of it. They want to get the credit as if they're going to fight for it and then they don't fight for it. So they'll lie to you and gaslight you and act like, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm on your side. Look, look at the article. The article says I'm trying to raise it again through reconciliation. And again, anybody who doesn't know the details of how this stuff works, they're going to be convinced. They're going to think all the Democrats want to raise the minimum wage. And oh, what are they going to do? They just ran into opposition they couldn't overcome. No, they haven't. They didn't even really try. So it's the hollow, empty virtue signal party where they pretend like they're on your side and then they don't do enough. So uh, this is... This is actually more frustrating than if they just didn't even bring it up again. Because, again, they want the credit without actually doing the work and fighting for it. And that's the worst of all worlds.